Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your Django website and get it ready for public release. Now, there are a few key settings that you need to configure here in order to have a secure website, a website that's stable, and a website that is user-friendly. So let's go ahead and have a look. All right guys, right off the bat here, I just wanna show you what we're working with. I have a website called Microdomains. It is at this URL, micro.domains, and I am SSH'd into that server. And let's just have a look around here. We have our basic Django project infrastructure in the home directory of this user. And um, we're gonna be doing a lot of our changes inside of the project directory. And then in there we have the settings.py file. So that brings us to our first configuration setting that we want to set. And that is hiding the secret key. So inside of your settings.py file, we want to come down to this line where it says secret key equals some really, really long string of characters, numbers, and symbols. So what we're gonna do instead of this, as you can see by the comment here, it's not secure for production. We want to do something different. We want to read the secret key from a file and we can do that with this line, two lines of code actually. Um, what I'm going to do is copy my secret key, get rid of that, and then we're going to create a file called secret key in the root of our project directory to contain just the secret key itself. So what this is doing is um, navigating to that path on our system, opening the file and reading the secret key in assigning it to the variable secret underscore key. The one other thing we have to do here is import OS because we have that down below. So import OS up here and we're using it right down here. So let's go ahead and save that file. And in the root of our project directory, which is here for me, we want to create a file called secret key, S-E-C-R-E-T underscore K-E-Y dot text and then paste in your secret key. We wanna get rid of everything in here except the actual value of the secret key. That includes the quotes at the beginning and the end, and that's what we're gonna be left with. So that should take care of securing your secret key as far as Django settings are concerned. The next thing you wanna do is to install an SSL certificate on your Django website. I actually have a video for you that you guys can check out up here. I'll also have that linked at the end of the video. And what this gives you is the lock icon in your browser. So this is what you're gonna end up with. I have a valid certificate installed that was issued by Let's Encrypt. And the really cool thing is that this is 100% free. So definitely check out that tutorial for how to get an SSL certificate and enable HTTPS on your Django website. Now that you have an SSL certificate installed on your website, we need to add some additional HTTPS settings to our settings.py file. So open back up your settings.py file, come down to the bottom, and we want to add these three variables, session, cookie, secure equals true, CSRF cookie, secure equals true, and secure SSL redirect equals true. So session cookie secure, just make sure that your cookies are being served over HTTPS. Similar for CSRF, that your CSRF cookies are being secured and served over HTTPS. And then finally, secure SSL redirect. Make sure that all of your traffic is being redirected from HTTP to HTTPS. Next, we want to similarly add some HSTS settings to our settings.py file. And if you're not familiar, HSTS stands for HTTP Strict Transport Security. And what that is, is essentially adding some information to the header of your request, which says that browsers should not and cannot connect to your website via an insecure connection, i.e. HTTP. So let's go ahead and look at those settings down here at the bottom of our settings.py file. We have secure HSTS seconds, secure HSTS preload, and secure HSTS include subdomain. So the HSTS seconds uh, is this really big number here is equal to one year. So basically we're gonna put that information in the initial request and subsequent request for that matter to the client. And there are not, the, the browser is gonna respect that. And for the next year, we're not gonna be able to connect to your website via an insecure connection. So that's a really good thing. Um, the HSTS preload equals true and the include subdomains equals true. You wanna set these both also to true because even if you don't have subdomains, they're just a good thing to include in in that request header. Moving right along, we wanna make sure that we have our domain name specified in the allowed host settings. And again, we're gonna be working in the settings.py file. So down here, find the variable allowed host. And you might already have this specified. 
In here, this is just a list of domain names, host names that are allowed to uh, serve or connect to this server, your Django server. And again, like I said, we're working with micro.domains. That's the domain name. So I specified that here and the www version of that as well. Next up, and this is a big one, we wanna make sure that we turn off debugging in production. And I'm gonna show you what the difference is between debugging equals true and false. You might already know this, but let's go ahead and set the setting first. In our settings.py file, just make sure you come down to the line that says debug equals, set it from true to false. By default, it's true when you start your Django project. And back here in my web browser, if I go to a page and debug equals false for me right now, if I go to a page that doesn't exist, we're gonna see a, a, an error message that is user-friendly-ish, you know, it's better than what it looks like when debug equals true. So before the video, I just made this tab over here, went to this page, and you've probably seen this too. This is what a page looks like when debug equals true. You get all this extra information that the end user really doesn't care about. So that's why we wanna set off, or turn off debugging in production. Moving right along, we wanna make sure that we copy our static files into our static root directory. And basically when I say static files, I just mean images, CSS files, JavaScript files, any non HTML PHP files on your Django server. So let me show you what I mean by this. In your settings.py file, you by default have a static URL at this address. Um, you want to add a static root, which in my case is just at the base of my project slash static. So what we do when we save this in our settings.py file, Python or Django actually has a very convenient function that you can execute to copy those files into that static directory. We can do something like python manage.py collect static. And as you can see here, there is no static directory right now because I haven't run this yet. And when we execute this, it created that directory home, udoms, microdomain static. So if we do an ls again, we see our static directory and all of our static files are now copied in there. All right, guys, last one here. We want to run Django's automated deployment checklist. And again, this is a convenience function that Django provides for us. So inside the root of your project directory, we want to type something like python manage.py check dash dash deploy. And if you've been following along, you should see no issues at this point. Uh, before running this, you might see something that looks like this, which is showing you the individual issues that you need to fix before going to deployment. Um, but since we fixed those, we are good to go. Guys, if you have any questions about the content in this video or getting set up with Django for production, let me know in the comments below. I have all these other videos about Django and getting ready for production, so check those out as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.